Some days my job is really easy, other days it's not. Today's one of those days. Iran preparing imminent missile attack against Israel, senior U.S. officials. Uh, so we had some news this morning, and I mentioned that my job is uh, sometimes easier than others. Talking about these subjects on the internet is not my favorite thing to do, but I should redact my statement because honestly, uh, we should all take a second to be thankful if we're not directly impacted by this tough situation that's been going on in the Middle East. So uh, my job is easy in comparison to what's happening there today, but it does have impacts on the market. So let's talk a little bit about that. The big picture, Tehran has been avowing retaliation after a series of recent Israeli assassinations. The White House believes it is about to begin, and it is already warning of severe consequences for Iran. The warnings of an imminent attack came just hours after Israel escalated its conflict with Hezbollah, uh, the I Iran-backed militia, by launching a ground invasion of southern Lebanon. Iran has been promising retaliation against Israel for two months since the assassination of Hamas leader, uh, I can't say that name, in Tehran. So, of course, these headlines are always difficult for, uh, for many people because, of course, it's always sad and from a humanitarian standpoint. Uh, I know the vast majority of us are just hoping for and praying for peace. Uh, we do see a big reaction in the market. So in this video, we're going to be discussing a little bit of how this news is impacting the charts. Take a look at some price action. And we'll also discuss the economic data that came out this morning, specifically the manufacturing PMIs and the Jolt's job openings. So let's go ahead and get into it. As we get started in this video, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up button. It does help just to notify us that you're enjoying the content and this content is beneficial to you. So I uh, appreciate you on that. And this week we're doing something pretty fun. We're giving away a free copy of the Edge Finder. It is a totally free to enter competition or not really competition, it's just a giveaway. We're selecting one random person to win a free copy of the Edge Finder. Bit of a Halloween theme for fun thing that we're doing. So if you'd like a chance to win an Edge Finder copy, click the link in the description, throw your name in the hat and you might win. So the Nasdaq's down 1.65% at the time of recording this video. Uh, of course, falling pretty quick once that news hit uh, CNN and all the different reporting agencies uh, or the news networks. Big, uh, scary headlines, of course, usually do cause the stock market to drop. And notably, gold also popped on that same, uh, same news as people seem to make a bit of a flight for safety. And we know that this is pretty escalated because you can see the reaction in oil, which arguably is the most sensitive thing that I can think of to geopolitical escalations. Because of course, when it comes to unfortunate war scenarios, oil becomes very, very sought after in high demand. So we see oil up three and a half percent today, again, signaling that there is some serious concern in the world about what's going on there. And we also see stocks dropping. So the reaction's pretty violent here this morning. Uh, could be much worse in terms of what the NASDAQ could be doing if it was you know, even scarier. If we do see further escalation, it is possible that the NASDAQ drops another you know, two, three, four percent uh, based off of this news. S&P 500's down 1%. And if we take a look at these things on the daily chart, you can see that they are just modestly coming off of their all-time highs. Uh, and to be honest, uh, just a reaction in my view, if, if this does uh, continue to escalate in any way, uh, the indices are very likely to see further downside in the short run. Now, that's not something I can predict. And I want to pause when it comes to geopolitical conflict. A lot of traders make the emotional gut decision to place a trade based off of some headline. But that is never what I do. Uh, I don't know what's coming next for the conflict in the Middle East. I'm definitely not an expert on that subject, but it has certainly caused some volatility in the markets. What I can focus on personally and what I focus heavily on in this channel is the economic data. We can take a look at what happened this morning now. So this morning we got job openings data out of the United States. And if we zoom in over here, what we can see is that we got a reading of 8.04 million jobs, uh, job openings declared compared to forecasts of 7.64 million. So this is good news, right? In terms of the state of the labor market. Uh, and in my view, what we want to see, we actually do want to see the economic data for jobs showing some signs of strength. Now, why would you not want that? Well, you might not want that if you're somebody who very seriously wants to see rate cuts. So if you're, for example, bullish on gold, this is not a particularly good number because again, strength in the labor market means the Fed might take their time to cut rates, 
which means a stronger dollar, which means lower prices for gold. That being said, that's a bit muted today due to the clause that is the geopolitical conflict happening this morning. So again, something to consider when we look at the full picture is that economic data here this morning was slightly upbeat for the uh, situation with rate cuts and, and strength for the dollar. But again, gold is up off of geopolitical conflicts, so don't you know be discouraged. Sometimes this can be a little daunting, but uh, good economic data, stronger dollar does not always mean lower gold immediately. Uh, but it does in the longer term, in my view, uh, poise us to see a little bit strength, a little bit stronger of a labor market than perhaps what was previously expected. Now we get the big jobs data point this week. NFP is on Friday. So we will, of course, be covering that and making videos all throughout the week. Manufacturing PMI data also came in. And if we zoom in on this one, we can see that manufacturing PMIs came in at 47.2 compared to the forecast at 47.6. So a very slight miss on that front, still putting us below the 50 line, which remember that for PMI, PMI data, if it's below 50, it is considered contraction in the economy, and above 50 is considered growth in the economy, and in this case, specifically the manufacturing component of the U.S. economy. So we do see uh, still some slow uh, numbers out of manufacturing, but this is a smaller component of the U.S. economy and is a devastating per se. Uh, so let's take a look at the U.S. dollar's reaction to this data point this morning. And you can see the dollar index seems to be trying to find support here around the 100 level. We didn't quite get to 100 on the dot, but 100.3, let's call it, and a bit of a attempt to potentially break out here from this downtrend on the dollar index. That being said, I am very, very much still cautious on the US dollar. And if we do get a big push to the upside, I'd be curious to see if sellers can take back control and continue the downtrend. For the bulls out there, what you probably want to see is a breakout above the 102 level. And of course, from there, maybe we even test into the 103 level. What's going to get us there? Three letters, NFP. If you get strong jobs data, dollar probably breaks out. We see a bigger push higher. If you don't, then you probably see a fizzle out and a continuation of this downtrend. Which, where, which one do I lean more towards? I don't know. I'm very much kind of stuck in the middle. And the reason I say that is because when we actually go take a look at, I'm going to pull up, I'm going to borrow the gold and silver scanner here for a second. When we look at U.S. economic data, actually, we're going to use the stock indices scanner. So we take a look at U.S. economic data. We can see that GDP uh, was about as expected. Manufacturing PMI came in slightly lower than expected. Services, we do get latest data tomorrow or Thursday, one or the other retail sales. Uh, so we get a mixed picture. When we look at the state of the economy based on the metrics that we focus mostly on this channel, we get a bit of a mixed reading for the U.S. economy. So if you're somebody who is, you know, very bullish on the dollar, you probably want to see these things start to tick blue more heavily, meaning you want some strong services numbers. You want to see strong NFP on Friday, unemployment rate. You want to stay low. You're looking and hoping for strong economic data. But for me, as a trader, I don't try and predict these things. I look at the state of where they're at, and that sets my opinion on them. So I'm kind of mixed because we have mixed economic readings. By the way, if you'd like to get access to the Edge Finder and unlock all of this powerful data, you can try it for 30 days using the link in the description down below. And if you have any questions, please take a second to click the first link in the description, and it will allow you to live chat directly with a member of our support team. This is a real person that you'll be connected with. You can ask questions about it. You can ask for payment plan information if you want to pay with crypto. If you want to download our course for the Edge Finder, that is totally free. You can chat with us using the first link in the description and check out more information about the tool. And NASDAQ's down 2% at the time of me recording this video, which is a big slide here for the day. And uh, getting close to this 38.2% retracement, I'll be keeping an eye on this one for a possible trade, depending on where we're at with the data going into at that time. If we see a continued slide, I'll uh, take a closer look at it. The Russell's also down 1.8%. The S&P's down 1.2%. You got Dow Jones down 07 And gold continues its push higher. Uh, again, continued uptrend here. I'm only interested in gold if it does give me a pullback. Otherwise, uh, probably just continuation of the trend until further notice. It looked like we had a little bit of a sell side move coming into play, but for bears out there, we probably want to go down to the four hour chart. And if you're a bear on gold, you need this level to break, right? You need to see this in order to uh, stay confirmed on the bear side. But again, playing the bear side of this trend has been a absolute uh, one-sided fight and it's not going well for the bears. 
continuation for the trend to the upside seems to be the most logical and easy answer in my view. Trying to call this top has been the devastating attempt for so many traders this year. If you're looking for a better brokerage, then stick around for a second. I'm gonna tell you how you can get some free sign-up perks with great brokerages all around the world. Whether you trade FX or indices, commodities, futures, all of the above, I'm gonna show you a really cool way that you can get free sign-up perks with your new account. So if you're interested in switching into a different brokerage, you can get things like deposit bonuses or free stock shares, or you can even get access to some of our products for completely free. All you have to do to find out current perks being offered to new depositors is go to a1trading.com slash brokers. That's a1trading.com slash brokers. And as you look at that page, you'll see all these different offerings that we've currently locked down for you guys as subscribers, as viewers. Now, of course, we get something out of this. If you choose to use these links, you'll be supporting our page. But in return for the viewers, we've got great sign up perks available for you guys so that you get some free game just by signing up for a brokerage if you're looking to do so. So check it out on our website. You can find current deals at a1trading.com slash brokers. Thanks for watching this video. And on the screen right now, you'll see some other options of other videos we put together that might be helpful to you in your trading career. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.